let's appreciate uh, Prophet Manton as he comes here so that he can just speak the word God has placed in his heart. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your mighty power. We thank you for the visitation of heaven that's touching down in the city of Nairobi. We thank you, Lord, that many people are going to pierce from the earthly dark atmosphere and begin to move into the position of a heavenly place on the earth. As Jesus said in the model prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then give us our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we uh, forgive others. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Everybody lift your hands. Say, I'm delivered from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever and ever. The victory, my friends, is in the spirit world. Not in the natural world all the time. Take your seats. God bless you. You don't need to look to man. You need to look to God. And the place of the heavenly purpose is the place where you're going to find the best things in life. I want to teach you something here. Listen to me. I want to tell you how to pray. How many want to know how to pray? I'm going to give you one key right here. You need to pray for the glory of God to come upon you. Lift your hands right now. This is what you need. You need the Holy Spirit to fill you. You need to get out of his way. Yes. When you get out of his way, he begins to make the way. And now things begin to prosper. I heard the Lord say this is going to be the day of great prosperity, tremendous wealth creation for the church like never before. They're going to be industry leaders and industry makers from within the house of, houses of God. Many places call themselves churches, but they're not necessarily the real house of God because the presence of the Lord is not very strong there. Lift your hands and pray. Say, Father, let your glory... Let your glory, let your glory come upon me. Exodus 33, verse 8, I think it is. It's in the 33rd chapter of Exodus. Moses said, show me your glory. God said, I can't show you all of myself because no man can look on my face and live. But nevertheless, I'll put you in the cleft of the rock over here and you can watch me. My friend Moses, as I walk by, you'll see the back of me as I walk by. And the Bible then begins to declare that the glory was so heavily on, on Moses that when he came off the mountain, people couldn't look at him. They had to cover him with a sheet because he was beaming with light. Lift your hands. Can I tell you, when that happens to you, the devil even... In your circumstances and situations will begin to run away from you. Let's look back to the patriarch. I want to I prophesy. These are going to be the days of the word becoming flesh. Jesus said, my word I sent among you. And the word was God. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh, John chapter 1. And began to have a manifestation. The Bible says that the earth groans and travails for the manifestations of the sons of God. If you're a lady, you're a daughter, but you're also a son in the spirit. And the Lord says, now, when are you going to rise up? Lift your hands and pray with me right now. This is a prayer meeting. This is a prayer service. I love the prayer thing. I told Archbishop I was thrilled when uh, I said it yesterday when I heard it was prayer conference. Uh, instead of the word revival. We talk about revival a lot, but the way to get revival, <laughs> thank you, dear, is to pray. To break through. Like the Lord said in Song of Solomon, come away, my beloved, come away with me and I'll show you great things. And Jesus said, where I am, there 
my servants shall be also. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I want to be where you are. There's an old beautiful song in the church from the 1990s in America. I just want to be where you are. Oh, yes. Dwelling, dwelling daily in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar. I want to be near to where you are. That's where the victory is. Lift your hands. The Holy Ghost is here. I feel the presence of the Lord. Let him touch you right now. God is preparing people for greatness, but you have to go through the preparation process. Man, I had a lot of stories to tell, and Archbishop told them all. So that's done. So let's move on. <laughs> he was telling my stories. The Holy Ghost. You know, Swahili, English, Holy Ghost. Yes? Hello? And I, I was getting what he was saying. I was like, oh, my God. I had a story on that, and you, he told it. So that's done. Let's move forward. <laughs> <laughs> these are going to be the days when God is going to begin to raise up great people lift your hand and say I am great say it by faith oh yeah say it by faith I'm great but say that in reality I'm going to become great and I'm going to become a manifested blessing Nairobi is a serious place wave your hand and say thank God for Nairobi but not, not the way it is not the way it is, the way it's going to become. Lift your hands. I saw in the vision, in 2002, I was in London, England, sitting on the side of a place I was sitting in a big, beautiful house in Hart Hertfordshire, England, north of London. And the Lord said, son, grab your recorder. In those days, we used to have big tapes, cassette tapes, and a big cassette, uh, a portable cassette recorder. And you put the tape in and push the buttons and hit. And for 25 minutes, I spoke over Kenya. And the Lord said, take this word, have it transcribed and send it out by email. Those days, we didn't have social media. And the Lord made that thing go viral. I think, I think a, a, a couple of million people uh, knew, millions of people knew about that prophecy. Maybe some of you here heard about it. Now, the Lord showed me. Nairobi becoming a cosmopolitan, world-class city and the destination of people on the earth. Lift your hands. A beautiful metropolis. World-class. People said to me, Prophet, in 2002, there was nothing like that. It was a dirty city. Street people, holes in the road, no street lights, no order. No uh, trees, no plants, no beautiful buildings, just nothing. It was just nothing. And then the Lord began to show me the superhighways and the expressway and even the train lines. Now look, the train lines are going across the country. You could even get a first class uh, seat in the train and go from here to the coast. And they're expanding it throughout East Africa. Lift your hands. This kind of development is happening. I saw it in the spirit. 2002 is 22 years ago. That's a few minutes ago, yeah? Hmm? Eh? Hey. Hey. Look at your name and say, eh? Hey. That's a few minutes ago. I first came to Kenya in 2000, June. And the Lord had me prophesy the change of government that was coming. And people said to me, oh, prophet, this is dangerous. You know, the government has people in these meetings listening to what's being said. We were at KICC. The place was completely full. People were standing around the walls. And after I prophesied, the presence of God, the heavens opened, and the fire came literally into the city, and glory clouds began to touch the people. And God had me line the people up and I laid hands on about six at least six thousand people and every single one of them fell to the floor under the power of God and there were thousands outside and they were slain in the Holy Ghost laying uh, on the floor when the sign used to be on KICC canoe headquarters I don't know if anybody remembers that and that began the thing within a year and a half the government thing was going. And then the Lord said, I chose uh, a, a, new, a new president I'm going to ordain. You know who he is. And he's going to go forward. Things begin to shift from then. 
And all these things began to happen. Then in 2007, I had a vision of the post-election violence. And I, I was brought to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, who was Raphael Tuju at the time. And he sat and listened to me for 50 minutes, 5-0, 5-0 minutes, almost an hour. He didn't say a word. He didn't interrupt me. He didn't almost blink. He was looking at me with big eyes as I told him what the Lord showed me. And he said, I, later on he told me, his, I was amazed. And his excellency, Mike Kabaki, the president, was amazed to hear these things. And General Karume, we met with him and he brought the messages to the president. The Lord was speaking of such things and the post-election violence was, was going to happen and the Lord showed me not to scare people and not to see it to happen but to stop it. Lift your hands and say praise the Lord. To stop it. And that thing only went three weeks. Had it gone longer it could have been to come like a mini Rwanda. A tribal genocide. How many thank God God had a prophet? Let me tell you something. Hosea 12, 13 says, by a prophet, he leads you out and protects and preserves and blesses. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I receive the prophetic glory now. I receive the touch of heaven. 2 Chronicles 20, 20 says, the Lord God will bless you as you receive the word of the prophet. Ezra 6, 14 said they built and prospered by the prophesying of the prophet. Amos 3, 7 said, Surely the Lord God will do nothing except he first reveal his secret to his servant, the prophet. 2 Peter uh, 1, 20, 21 says, Prophecy came not by the impulse of men or by a desire of man, but they came by holy, through holy men of God as they spoke by the Holy Ghost. How many know when God speaks, it has creative power? Lift your hands. Creative power to change situations and things. You have that power in you too. Myself as the prophet in the office of the prophet, called from my mother's womb. How I received the calling is the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me himself in New York City. In 19... Uh, well, I won't tell you how long ago. It was a, few, it was a while back. <laughs> That's how I received the call. Lift your hands direct from heaven. God, say, lift your hands. Say, I want to receive direct from heaven. Now, you need to have teachers like Archbishop. You need the apostle to teach. And he does it so well. Can we give the Lord a hand for our Archbishop? My God. Come on. Can you do better than that? Are you awake? Come on. Clap your hands like you mean it. So I'm going to go, woo! Okay. Archbishop even started doing that when he was speaking. He was going, woo, woo. I thought, boy, they, on the internet, you hear that song that goes, woo, woo, woo. You know, he didn't, he didn't get it from there. He got it from the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands out this way. So let I say, Lord, I received the prophetic grace. I receive it today. Now I saw this. The Lord said to me that I'm going to raise up an elite new society of Christians in the body of Christ. Now, when I heard this, it was regarding Kenya. Lift your hands. I could say this in South Africa. I could definitely say it in Nigeria. I could say it in America. I could say it in London, England. I could say it in Belgium. I could say it in France. I could say it in South America. I could say it in Japan or China or Singapore or anywhere in the world, Australia or wherever, or the Middle East or any continent. Western Europe, Eastern Europe, but the Lord spoke about it for Kenya. Kenya. Someone say Kenya. Someone say Kenya. Say I'm here at the right place at the right time. And you need to come up now, come out of all the mess. You know the devil is a master at studying people. He looks at people and he sees how he can mess them up. Lift your hands as, as, as it was taught here today and yesterday. The Lord said, now, when you, when you begin to get in the glory and you begin to pray, you get into the spirit dimension, the spirit world, now things begin to change. You begin to close all those doors. All those open loopholes get shut. All those oppressions get broken off of you. And things begin to shift. Lift your hands, God. 
This is powerful right here. I pray it upon every one of you and the thousands more that are watching online and the millions of people that are out there in the society. What God is going to do in Kenya is a phenomenon. I'm not a, I'm not a spokesman for Kenya. I'm not a PR man. I don't care. You know what? I'm from New York City. I'm from America. I'm not from here. I was sent here by God. Hey, eh? Praise the Lord. Someone told me what the prophetess said as I was leaving the stage yesterday. So she was saying how God sent me here and all that. And I, I, did, I was trying to get what she was saying. There's people were telling me what she was saying. So the Lord began to speak a confirmation of that. So, but myself, I have no reason to promote anyone or anything. Do you understand that? And Archbishop wrote in my book that he so wonderfully published, and it's on the table, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. You can get a copy of it on the way out. It's out there. And uh, he said in the days when we didn't have direction, we needed a prophet. Also someone that wasn't biased. You know, I wasn't Luo or Kukuyu or Kamba or, or Luya or any other tribe. I'm New York, USA, American. First world man. But I found something out in the Holy Ghost. And I want to help you with this. I want to give this to you. It's not privileged and special unto me as an American man. I want to give it to you. She's smiling. Thank you, sister. You're encouraging me. Some of you looking at me like, what? Can you look happy and smile? Show me your teeth. Let's see. Let's see. Are you okay? All right. All right. All right. I'm trying to help you. Yeah. I found something out that's better than being an American or a first world man or from the great city of New York, and my father was a political leader. My father, uh, Thomas J., was the boss of New York City for 30 years. He was the boss of New York, my father, politically. He was the political boss of New York. President Bill Clinton spoke at a, a great event of my father. 3,000 people were in the place that was full. Uh, my father brokered the Irish, uh, uh, the, the Northern Ireland Peace Treaty between uh, the terrorists there, the, the Irish and the, uh, and, the, and the English, and put that thing down. It never came back again. My father was a great man. But I found something else out from the Lord. There's something better than being American. Lift your hands. And there's something better definitely than being from any country. It's becoming a global citizen in the 21st century. Lift your hand say, that's me. I am a global citizen. Everything belongs to me. Jesus said, all things are mine, and therefore all things are thine. What my Father has given to me, therefore I give it to you. Freely I give you all things in the kingdom. Oh, yes. And the Lord spoke to me. Are you ready? He said, I'm raising up people that are going to be industry leaders and industry makers. But you're going to get it from the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands. I'm telling you, it's not going to come any other way. A man of God can lay hands on you. I can lay my hands on you. Archbishop laid, lays his hands on people. You get a transference of power from heaven by that. Yes. But when the Holy Spirit overshadows you, think about it. The Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. The angel Gabriel came to say what would happen. And she gave birth to the Son of God. Lift your hands. She was a 15-year-old girl, not known, not respected, no business, no money, no uh, credit, no honor, no position, no any position of anything. She was just a girl there. And the Holy Ghost had, had her give birth to the Savior of mankind. Lift your hands right now. Wow. This is amazing. You, 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 see, people don't think it can happen here. But it can. And I tell you, it will if you get the power of God to come on your life. The Lord is touching people right now. Identify your calling. Identify yourself as a royal son or daughter of God. It starts there and tap the grace of the anointing. And the Lord says, 
The Lord says, I'm going to raise up industrialists. And they're not going to be from other communities, other ethnicities. They're not going to be wicked men. Lift your hands. I know worshipers, people serving other gods, other peoples that have come here and saw the opportunity. They, they do so much business. They do so much industry. Do you know what is available in the nation of Kenya? In the Northland, in the Northland, you have water. They say that can wet the society for almost 100 years. If they tap the water, but men have played games with it. Lift your hands. God is going to give the codes and the secrets, as I said yesterday. Ideas on how to do in certain industries. There's even oil there. You stick oils in the Middle East for the sheiks and the Arabs. No. The oil's in Kenya. But what's happening in the industry? Men have played games with it. Look at the building that's going on. People come together and they put their resources together. And they build things together, and that's how they get to do it. But the church seems to be the last one. They don't understand how to walk in unity. And what did God say in Psalm 133? He said, where there's unity amongst the brethren, how good and pleasant it is to a brethren to dwell together in unity. For where there's unity, I will command my blessing there. And guess where there is? It's here. Take the tea off. Here, there, here. Lift your hands. Put your hand on yourself. Say here, right here. You have to be unified within yourself. I could preach all day on this. I don't have the time, but I could. There, here. There is here. Yes. Oh, yes. Shakarata la basha. Everybody pray in the Holy Ghost as I'm speaking. Just pray in the Spirit quietly. Open your spirit. Uh, open your spirit to receive the impartation because the Lord is here. It's coming. It's coming here today. The angels of the Lord are here. The presence of the Lord is here. The Lord spoke to me this morning some very unusual things. And I won't share, I won't share all of them now because some of them are not just for public address here in this meeting, but they're they're big, big things that he's saying. And uh, I'll share what I can, what he allows me to share. Amen. But the Lord said industrialists are going to rise. I want to tell you it's, it's time now for good people to have a lot of money. Lift your hands if you want to elect yourself for that. Keep sowing because the harvest will come. Keep sowing. Keep giving. Keep giving your way out. Work the biblical economic system the best you can. First is the tithe. That's the 10% that you pay to God. It's not a seed that you sow. It's, a, it's like a payment that you give. A debt that you owe. We don't like the word debt so much. But 10% of your money that you receive out of the 100 doesn't belong to you. The Lord said, the tithe is holy unto me. Leviticus 26. Genesis 26. Malachi 3, 10, uh, 8 to 12. He said, you robbed me in tithes and offerings. And therefore a curse has been added to the financial life of the person who's a thief. God counts you that you've stolen from him. You weren't supposed to keep the 10%. That's number one. Pay your tithe. Then once you hit the 10%, now from the 10.01 uh, or to the 11th percent onward, now you're giving. Now is when you're giving. You really haven't given until you first tithe. Now people want to argue about this. Uh, should we care about men's opinion or the devil's voices or should we care about this book? You have your Bible, hold it up right now. Your phone, whatever you have your Bible, and hold it up right now. Say, this is my guide to life. This is my instruction manual. I will obey the word. The Lord says to the church of Kenya and the people here, this is a time for the word to become flesh. The word to become engrafted in your soul, renewing your mind and letting your heart be filled with the glory of what is written in these pages. You say, I look, I read 1 Chronicles 29, and I read 2 Chronicles 31 and 32, and I see the treasures that they had, and I see the trillions that Solomon had. Four billion worth of gold was laid at his feet. Four billion dollars, U.S. dollars. Four, actually it's 3.83 to be exact, billion dollars was laid at the feet of Solomon in one year's time. 1 Kings chapter 10, 1 Kings chapter 3. The first Kings, Kings chapter 10. A queen came to see Solomon 
And she fainted because of the glory of what she saw. Now I have to ask you a very painful question. Lift your hands. Close your eyes if you want. Act like it's not you. I don't know. How is your house? How is your house? How is your house? The Lord spoke about land. Archbishop confirmed it today again. He said it yesterday. He said it again today. You're supposed to have your own places. You're supposed to have your own life. You're supposed to own property. Most of the trouble you have is based on three things. Trusting the wrong person. Misguided loyalty. Broken focus. And also debt to other people. The Bible says, lift your hands. The Bible says, owe no man anything but to love him. Don't owe anybody. Some people get a car. They have to sell their car to pay their rent. Some people don't have enough money to pay their bills or to other people, and they're stressed out completely. How many know what I'm talking about? Just give a wave. Stress, stress, stress. You don't need that stress. God didn't call us to live like that. He called us to be rich in this world, full of land, full of property, full of gold, full of silver, full of treasure, full of money. Come on, somebody. Come on, say amen. amen. How much money you got in your pocket? Not enough. If you had a little bit, your pockets would be like this. See, my, my clothes stretch a little bit because I lost weight. Archbishop said to me on Sunday night in the crusade in Riru, he said, Prophet, you're different. I thought, I know, but what do you mean? He said, your belly, it's like it's gone. Where did it go? <laughs> look, look. Hey, my clothes now. You see, I need, I need tailors to help me fix everything and make me new stuff now. I said too much fasting and prayer, Bishop. That's what, Archbishop, that's what it is. Lift your hands. When you're fasting and praying and you're not thinking about the natural existence and Take, you know, you, 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 you're after the spiritual things. Let me tell you, there's a reward coming for that. God will repay you. God will help you. God will bless you. When you get the Holy Ghost on your life in its fullness and power, you watch what every, everything around you will change. Even your mind will become clear. You'll begin to dream new dreams, have new thoughts, have new visions, have new ideas, have new brilliance. Of thinking and thought inside of yourself. Lift your hands to that, claim it. Stay where you are if you want. But you're missing God if you don't move up. I'm telling you. I want to tell you something a little bit scary. Are you ready? Can you handle this? Can you handle some deep stuff? Wave at me if you can handle this. I want to tell you something a little bit scary. But there's, it's a solution-oriented statement. So you get the... The prick of the pain, but then you have the solution in the same statement. Some things God forbids you to see yet because your life is still in a mess. Lift your hands. Let's pray right now. Let's pray. Let's pray. This is a prayer meeting. This is a prayer meeting. Kurasha te sola she itct. Holy Spirit, shine the spotlight upon me. <laughs> that. <laughs> Oh, that you begin to change everything in my world and I'll work with you to fix it all. I'll get the focus that you have for me. I'm not going to stay at one level. I'm going to go to a higher glory. I prayed for a pastor uh, here. Uh, I mentioned this yesterday and the glory came upon and, and, uh, and the, the wife and the husband said, I felt fire on my head. Told me yesterday, your beloved Pastor Mora, wonderful servant of God, the fire was on his head while I was speaking. This is what we need today. And it's rare because too few men are carrying it, but I am. And I'm happy. And this is the purpose of my life. I'm thrilled and pleased and filled with pleasure and honor and very humbled by the fact that God filled me with his glory. That's why I'm able to see these things, even from 24 years ago and 22 years ago and then 18 years ago in the nation of Kenya things that were not there at all and now we see them right outside the headquarters of the church on Bunyala CFF headquarters the expressway is right there it wasn't there until last year lift your hands but I prophesied it 18 years ago 
and it got stalled. Can I tell you, it was supposed to be built under President Kibaki. But when the chaos broke out and then they did the whole coalition thing and all that, it diffused a lot of things. It threw a lot of things off. Very unfortunate. And that thing was supposed to be built from 2007 and 8 and 9. But it took until now, a couple of years back, under Uhuru Kenyatta to see that done. God bless him for doing it. God bless Uhuru Kenyatta for making that get through. Even the Chinese had to come because they had the expertise. Those people are smart. But I tell you, all the industries is not for the Chinese people. It's for the people of the soil. It's for the people that live here. It's for you that were born here. Foreigners are not supposed to come. And don't ever look at me because I didn't come to take anybody. I, I'll get my own. There's so much of, of things here to have. Everybody can have some. But there are people that build whole, build whole industries. And yet the people of the soil are the ones working for them. Something's wrong with that. When I first came here, I looked. I said, here's the Indians here. They have the industries and the shops and the companies. And then they have the Kenyan man and the Kenyan lady as a servant. I thought, no. This is not right. Lift your hands. I'm God's prophet. I'm telling you what he's saying. It's time for you to be raised up. What can you do about building an industry? The cement industry. The, there's a man in, uh, I'll tell you a story. There's a man in Nigeria named a a a Dangoti, Aliko Dangoti. He's now the richest man in Africa. He's in the cement business. And of course he got into other things, but I'm gonna tell you how he, I wanna tell you how his business started. He was a young man. There was an airplane that was full, and Bishop Oyedipo, David Oyedipo, and I believe it was uh, Benson Idahosa, the great apostle, Bishop Benson Idahosa, I think. The two of them together, or, or one or the other. And they needed a seat, so they said, would anybody be willing to give up their seat for the men of God? Aliko Dangoti raised his hand. He said, I'll, I'll get off the plane take another plane no problem I want to honor them and before he could get away the men of God listen to me listen to me the men of God came and put it, their hands on him and prophesied Dangoti is not a church man even till today he's not a church man he doesn't come to a church like this He's doing other things, you understand. But the power of God came by a prophecy through the one who got the sea. He said, thank you for doing that. I declare you'll be blessed greatly in your life all the days of your life. Whew! Took his hand back and left. And that was it. Today, he is the richest man in Africa. Yes. By the touch of God. This needs to be our prayer. Lord, don't, don't, don't cry like a victim. Oh, God, help me, help me. You can tell God what you need. You can sp Better than telling God because he already knows. You speak the things. We need a lot of teaching on faith. Faith declares things to mountains, and the mountains are removed. Mark 11, 23. Mark 11, 24 said the things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, and you'll have them. John 15, verse 7 said, if you, as you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you'll ask for what you will, and it will be done for you. By my Father, who's in heaven? Lift your hands. The spiritual blessing. Someone say the spiritual blessing. Faith TV water, eh? Is it good? <laughs> oh, yes. Let's pray. God said, I'm raising an elite society. Now, the Lord spoke to me a prophecy for this church. Psalm 35, 27. 
I read it years ago, and also Psalm 35 is very powerful. Read the whole of Psalm 35. It's very, very powerful. And uh, it talks about how God will strive with your enemies. He'll become the enemy to your enemies. We heard that here in the last session. But in the 27th verse, the Lord said in the word, he had it written in the word, they that favor my righteous cause. I thought that was one of those thus saith the Lord scriptures. I said, yeah, Lord, your righteous cause. That's what I want. How many would say that? Your righteous cause, whatever it is, Lord, that's, that's for me. That's what I want to do. And the Lord spoke to me and said, ah, read it again. I read it three, four times. I had to read it. I was like, I was trying to get it to see what it really said. Do you know the righteous cause that it was talking about? wasn't thus saith the Lord, it was David's. David says, I have received a commission, now I have a righteous cause of God, and he said, those that favor it, and say, let the Lord be magnified through this, that God will take pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. But I got to tell you something, it's not just David that the prosperity is for, it's every servant that's involved. Lift your hands. I prophesy over this house, everybody that's serving, connected with the, with, the, with the archbishop, everybody that's connected with an anointing like that I'm carrying, myself, you're going to see the blessing of the Lord. Let me tell you something. You're going to see the blessing of the Lord. All your labor, all your sacrifice, all your time spent, all your service, all of your things that you do for the glory of God, as, with love to the Lord and love for the man of God, love for the vision, God is going to begin to bring you rewards. You're not supposed to stay in a state of always struggling, you're supposed to be going from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from, from flatland to hilltop to plateau to mountaintop and flying above it like the eagles through the clouds. You're supposed to have more than anybody else. But the Holy Ghost is having me drill this thing. Like I'm drilling a well. The water's going to come up out of this thing, the prophetic word. It seems impossible, but I want to tell you, there are going to be people that are humble saints that are walking with God that are going to become multi-millionaires and multi-billionaires in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you, Dan Gotti, the richest man in Africa, is worth over 30 billion U.S. dollars. You know how many? That's many trillions of shillings. Somebody say trillions of shillings. And you're worried about... 20,000, 50,000, 100,000. What is that? That's not even a coin in the ocean, a drop of water in the ocean. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, touch me. The way you're going to get out of where you are to where you're going is by thought and by speed of thought and by brilliance that comes from the Almighty. But if you're living a messy life and you're stuck and you're in the wrong environment and you're oppressed by the devil and you don't pray and you don't fast and you don't push and you don't fight, uh, Bishop was saying, fight, 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 fight your way through. Fight, 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 fight. Don't sit down. Be the warrior that I've ordained you to be. Rise up. and Don't sit down. and Never quit. The scripture says so wonderfully, be not weary in your well-doing. For you're going to reap in due season if you faint not. It says he will reward you. Another scripture I love so much is Ephesians 6.10. I love it so much. Ephesians 6.10 says, Am I unjust to forget your labor of love? Impossible. Impossible. And I wanted to share a story and Archbishop mentioned it about the governor. I heard him saying something about a governor. But the Lord showed me something. I was in Kiambu at a political rally one time. Kiambu and under a tent. And the governor came. That governor's not there anymore. He's been replaced. And people were running after him. Like running after his cause. And running after him. And I thought my spirit was grieved. Dr. Edward, my spirit was grieved. I thought they're running after a man. What about the Lord that's here right now? 
Where is the honor in the church? I did a series called The Importance of Honor, and Archbishop was talking about that. This is going to become a book. I tell you, I have a real issue. I have more than 300 books that I'm writing. More than 300. I would say it's probably 500. Say with me by faith and agreement. Say prophet will get them done. Say it. Say prophet will get them done. All of them. In Jesus' name. He'll have the help to get them all done. Say it. I don't hear you. Thank you very much. And they'll go around the world. The importance of honor. Five things about honor. Number one, you need to honor God. Number two, you need to honor his word. His written word. And then you need to honor the Holy Spirit himself. And then number four, you need to honor the anointing that flows from the Holy Spirit through a, through a vessel. And then number five, you need to honor the servant of the Lord himself. Because of the sins of men in the church, because of the foolishness of people, the church has lost respect and honor. But I want to prophesy, it's coming back now. It's coming back and God is going to let God sideline who's not right. Leave them alone. Don't take any time on them. People cry sometimes. What about these ones that were there? I always tell people, leave them alone. Forget about them. Focus on yourself. Focus on what God wants you to do. You're responsible to God. There's a mirror looking at you. You have to fulfill your work. Why are you concerned about someone else's problem? Leave them to themselves. But I prophesy God's raising up new wineskins. He's going to raise up great churches filled with the Holy Ghost and power, even with tens of thousands of people in the churches. And let people be jealous and get mad and hate, the, be haters, whatever. We don't care. God's going to have houses where the glory's there, where the word's going to be taught, where people are going to be raised up as sons and daughters. And the Lord is speaking this a challenge to the church. I'm going to raise you up as my royal ambassadors. Lift your hands. Royal ambassadors can never be broke. They have the backing of the government, of the coffers and treasuries of the government. Amen. A king or a queen has a palace to rule from. A king or a queen can never be a broke person. You're broke because you don't have direction. You're broke because you don't have, you're not taking the leadership. You're not taking the mentorship. You're not asking the Holy Spirit to show you and lead you the way. I prophesied a series called The Money is Coming. 66 videos, an hour long each. 66 hours on video. 66 messages. And that's going to become a book. The Lord said, the money is coming. Lift your hands. I tell you for real, the money is coming. And not millions, but billions to the visionaries. I wrote some keys about being a visionary. A visionary. Before I say that, I got to tell you some uh, five things you need to do to understand what to do in your life. You need to discern the vision of God. Number one, discern means to see. Number two, you need to discover by practicing it. Jesus, when he was 12 years old, was practicing. Lift your hand and say, I will do the same no matter what my age. Tell the Lord. I'll start practicing more from today. Number three, you decide to do what it is God has given you to do with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, all your strength, all your so resources, everything, uh, all your time, all your energy, all your strength. Number four, you then do it. You decide to do and you do. Number five, then it becomes your destiny fulfilled. Say amen. I wrote this, uh, in fact, one of my pastors from far away, uh, uh, a new son in the Lord, he wrote these notes from my message. I was like, wow, give me, give me some more. And I'm, I'm, he wrote about 20 points that I had t taught in the message called, from, from, I did this last week. By the way, they're on our YouTube channel. And let me say this uh, before I forget. Because sometimes I, I leave and I go, oh, I didn't tell people how to get more blessed. I say this only that you'll get more blessed. My website is, you can write it down, Thomas Manton. You know my name. Thomas, found in John chapter 20, and Jesus saith unto Thomas, T-H-O-M-A-S. I know you, around here you say, Thomas, Thomas. Told my brother, Thomas. Some people say, Thomas. 
It's Thomas. You know how to spell that. Last name M A N Man Ton T O N M A N T O N dot com. Go to the website. You see the YouTube channel. Click like, subscribe, join, watch all the messages. Six hundred videos are on there. You could knock yourself out just getting blessed. Facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. There's the channel. And the website has it all, thomasmanton.com. And you could share that with your friends. Somebody might say, I saw this prophet from America. And Archbishop says, I look like Jesus, right? Like He looks like Jesus. Uh, like Jesus in town. Somebody made an Instagram video of me as I was walking on the street. And I saw, somebody sent it to me from Instagram. They said, uh, the guy said at the caption of the top, I saw Jesus in town today. I was like, oh my God, stop. I, 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 I'm honored that I may look like, resemble him somewhat in the way you see pictures, but he's my boss. You understand? I'm his friend. Okay. All right, here's some notes. The winning attitude of a visionary. Are you ready? I'm called by God to be his representative. Say, I am called by God to be his representative. In God, I learn to take dominion and I suppress everything. Genesis and 2 Timothy 1.7, Genesis 3.11. 3, There's so much here. Let me go through this real quick. God is always ready, but he's waiting for me to be ready. Someone say, God is waiting for me. It's not that I'm waiting for him. He's already there. How many know God is a trillionaire of trillionaires? How many know God has everything at his disposal? There's nothing that he lacks. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Psalm 24, and the world and all they that dwell therein are his. The cattle on a thousand hills are his. And the hills that the cattle are on are his. Everything is his. So what, what are you waiting for? You should not see yourself as a servant of the Lord alone, but also as his friend, like Moses, like Abraham. So much. God takes pleasure in my prosperity, never in your poverty. So much more. So much more to say. Let me, let me, let me stop there. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Father, I release the spiritual dimension of power and impartation from this platform, really from heaven through me coming to you god bless you dear and the lord is going to begin to cause his favor to come upon you 95 percent of your prosperity comes from favor favor with somebody somebody liked you somebody honors you somebody receives from you somebody respects you somebody feels connected to you work those relationships stop trying to impress anyone that doesn't care much for you Leave them alone, just like the ones maybe God has left some. Many churches in the land are Ichabod. This presence of God has left because of the ways of the men, uh, some in the pulpits. Leave them alone. Don't visit them. Don't cry for them. They have to account for their ways themselves. You have to account for your time. You understand me? And your ways, that's more important. And if you don't focus on yourself... Listen to God's servant here. If you don't focus on yourself, how are you going to take the next step? And as I said, God will even hold things back from you. I heard Archbishop Sharon testimonies. He said, we were at 500 people and I prayed for 1,000 people to be in the church. To have 1,000 member church. We're ready to go there now. Lord, help us. And he said, I'm, I'm saying what he said over the microphone or else I wouldn't say it. He said, the Lord said to him, you're not ready, son, for this 1,000 and more people. He said, what? What? I'm serving you. I've given him everything. I'm ready. We're, we're, we're set. We're ready. Ready, set, go. Re Someone say, ready, set, go. One, two, three, go. We're ready. Well, God said, there's still some issues in your heart I have to deal with. And Archbishop prophesied to me one day. Some weeks back, we were speaking together in another conference. I was on, and he came after to close the whole conference out two days in a row. And he said to me, he laid his hands on me, he said, Dr. Thomas, prophet, God has given you a new heart, and he's going to send you to all the great men of the world. And then he talked about the great center we would raise. He talked about the international connections, the networks of people. Can I tell you, it's all in motion. The Lord 
will keep things from you when you're not ready for it. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I'm done thinking about everybody else. I saw a woman in Arizona drive up in a Ferrari. She was interviewed by a young man. And he said, how did you get to where you are? And she says, oh, well, I'm 42 years old. She said, I guess I started late. He said, what do you think the obstacle was to you getting to where you are now? And you, you built this multi, uh, tens of millions of dollars business in the last three, four years. How did it just happen? She says, I stopped caring about what everyone else thought. I stopped trying to impress people. I started to just work on the vision that I have. Lift your hands. God has a special mission for you. He's a respecter of no person. He gives glory to everybody. Amen. You have to identify yourself. Let's pray right now. Stand on your feet right now. I got to close in 60 seconds. Father, bless the Archbishop even more. Give him his heart's desire. I heard that from the Lord. I have to say it. God's going to give him his heart's desire. Him and Mama, First Lady. And I saw this, Dr. Edward. I saw this, servants of God, all the pastors. Stand on your feet. All of you, get on your feet right now. God's going to give you some great things, some great blessings. Even things that you don't talk about. Even private things that you talk. I heard the Lord say, the fire of God is coming upon the family lines. Family members that are away from you. You're great in the church. You're full of God. But there are people in the bloodlines across, outside, cousins and other ones and distant relatives. I heard the Lord say in this next season, the fire of God is going to fall upon many because you prayed. And then they're all going to get touched and begin to serve God too. The kingdom exponential growth is upon us. The salvation of millions of people is coming. And private desires, things that we want that we haven't seen yet. God is going to begin to answer by fire. He's going to answer by fire. Surely, my word is like a hammer that will break the rock into pieces. You don't have to look around to how things are. You need to look and see how big God is and how much he wants to give you. Lift your hands. It's an impartation. Right now. Now, I'm not an evangelist and I'm not, a pa I'm not the pastor here. So I'm not going to give an altar call, and i got to go. I've taken my time to share what's on the mind of God. Do you appreciate that? Can you give the Lord a hand, praise? Do you appreciate? So I'm not going to give an altar call and do all of that. Just lift your hands where you are. I'm in the office of the prophet. I take my time in the microphone to share what's on God's mind. I have a distinct ministry, unique ministry, very unique ministry. And Archbishop has written about it uh, in my book. But you're at the back table, you can get a copy. How the prophetic word brought direction to the nation. Well, that's Hosea 12, 13. By a prophet, the prophet. Israel was led out of the wilderness. God wants to lead you out of your wilderness by the prophetic voice. And this is that day when this is going to happen. Lift your hands to God. Shakar I never feel like I'm done. I feel like there's a next uh, session to come. But I got to stop. Father, thank you for the grace of heaven. I am Thomas Manton the fourth. God bless you. Stretch your hands out toward me and say, Lord, I receive this. From today, the cloudiness over my vision and my mind is gone. And the new ideas from you are coming. And you're going to raise me up. And I had more to say to the church. I'll do that in another session. We want to challenge the church now to rise up and to become powerful people. Even to build industries and business. And the Lord says again, he said, yesterday I said this, I want to just leave you with this. He's, he, I saw a restrictive constriction power. Like when, a, when, when something is squeezed and they can't move upon wicked men in the land. God says, judgment will come to the wicked. I'm going to begin to cause things to change. And the, the Lord says your focus should be you and God and the house of God more than the people outside. Lift your hands right now and pray for yourself. Close your eyes and pray for yourself. If I can communicate this better, I just feel in my spirit. I just don't have words enough to say what I feel. The impartation from heaven will change everything. One idea from God can make you so successful you'll not know your former life.
compared to the future days. And that day, the Lord says, that day is upon us now. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. God bless you. Can we give the Lord a praise? Blow the Lord Jesus a kiss right now and tell him, Jesus, I love you so much. Come on, give him one. Woo! Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Ferris of 10,000, uh, Bright and Morning Star, Alpha and Omega, Soon and Coming King, Bishop and Overseer of our souls, the one who began a good work in us that will fulfill it and perform it, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Come on. Hallelujah. Give the Lord praise. The King of Kings, uh, the Lord of Lords, He is the Everlasting Father, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, uh, the Rose of Sharon, uh, the Lily of the Valley. You are fairest of 10,000. You are. We love you so much. Touch us today, Lord. Touch us today, Lord. Amen. Until Friday or the next meeting, God bless you. Invite someone to come. Let there not be an empty seat in the house. Lift your hands right now. It's your job to go and get people and bring them. You do that. I love you very much. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.